Revelation chapter 12, we're going to pick it up here with verse 15. Remember what has happened. This is where Michael himself, the archangel, cast Satan out onto the earth and we have the last trump. That's the woe trump. And certainly uh, heaven begins to rejoice, but it says, woe to you that are on earth because Satan is down there and he knows he has but a short time. And of course that short time is a five month period. Is it not strange that it's the same length of time as Noah's flood? that the, the, the rains came, the flood of life. And here we have this ark of the end times, that you'd better be on board of truth, the ark of truth. But the woman, which is Mother Israel, that is to say, those um, um, tribes through which Christ came, um, fled into the wilderness. That's, that's God's good earth. God's good earth takes care of its own. That's one reason why this nation, barely over 200 years old, is a superpower of superpowers. It has the blessings of God. In God we trust. Uh, those things are not accidental. Those things didn't just happen. It's written and written long ago. And having said that, um, the, um, uh, the woman was given uh, two wings of an eagle that this eagle would lead, would guide, would direct. And of course, uh, I have nothing to, uh, um, I, my concern is, not my concern, but I feel it's speaking here of the Elijah ministry that comes just before the great day of the Lord that helps that woman. So having said that, let's pick it up in the 15th verse. Remember back in um, verse 9, you had the old dragon, which is the serpent, the devil, Satan, and Antichrist. Don't, don't ever be deceived at the names of Satan. They're roles that he plays. And you're going to find out that, um, in, that in this 15th verse, as we read, he is again the serpent. That's the, his role of, of, uh, of uh, deceiving women. Okay? And naturally, he's trying to deceive this woman in the in in wilderness. Chapter 12, verse 15, word of wisdom from our Father, and it reads, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood, this flood of lies and deception. Remember, remember back in the ninth chapter, it told you in verse 18, and these three was the third part of, by these three were the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths, lies. You know, as long as you have the truth in your mind, a lie can't bother you. You're not going there. Why? Because you know that truth. And, and you know that truth well. Verse 16. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now his name switches back again to dragon, meaning Satan himself. Verse, um, you know, the earth, um, good old earth is good to us. And, and don't ever forget that the Israel tribes were made from the earth. Uh, Adam was made from the clay of the soil. And um, God choose, chose what uh, he could make all from the same lump. Verse 17, to continue. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Oh, he was ticked and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's God's elect, those that know the truth, which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Naturally, Satan has everyone else deceived because the whole world wonders after him. But there is that election that stands in his way which they have the testimony of Christ. Why? Because the Holy Spirit speaks through them. And they cannot be had. They cannot be deceived. Why? You're, you know, we find, rather than in that hour of temptation to find this false one tempting, we find him to be an abomination. Disgusting. So it's real easy to make that stand against him. Now we're going to go right into the 13th chapter I want you to know that our Heavenly Father uses symbolism a great deal. It's a fantastic way of teaching. 
I want you to think about God's creation. Have you ever seen him other than uh, pollution, what pollution might bring forth, any uh, multi-headed uh, creature or thing? You know? No, you don't. God creates everything natural. But he does use symbolism to teach with. We do that in our schools today with little children. Instead of saying learn to count to three, we take three blocks and have, have the, the child count the blocks so that there is a visual aid there too. So that's what God does here in these teachings is he gives you an aid to go by. Let's take chapter 13. Let's read it. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, first of all, you're going to find out when we get to the 17th chapter that these ten crowns go to ten kings Satan will bring with him. They're not earthly kings. Let that settle in your mind. It's important. Where these ten crowns go to ten uh, kings that Satan brings with him, not earthly uh, kings. <clears throat> and uh, what do we have here? Anytime you, th you have a multi-headed thing, you have a political system. Now, in the book of Revelation, you must be familiar <clears throat> with what the sea, the water, is symbolic of. What, what does God use it for? And remember this always. When God interprets something for us, we have no right to interpret it further. You want me to say that again? When God interprets something for us, we have no right to interpret it further. Chapter 17, verse 15. You're not going to have it. Just listen to me. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples, peoples of the world, and multitudes and nations and tongues. So this simply is a world political system that arises from the sea of people in this final generation. One worldism. It's been spoken of many times in the Old Testament that it would come to that, especially the book of Daniel. And, and here you have it. Uh, again, that was God's interpretation that the waters are the people. So you, you don't mess with that. That's not, uh, that's not a parable. It isn't a figure of speech. It's not an idiom. It's not a metaphor. It's, a trans it's, it's an explanation. And it's God himself speaking. So you don't mess with it. So what do we have here, quite frankly? A one world political system that arises from the people of the world, all languages and everything, in the final generation. So you can see that. So take a look at it mentally. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Their spot is not our spot. Speaking of Kenites. In the great uh, song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. That great... Um, bear of Rusha, and uh, certainly that bear, as it is written in Ezekiel 38 and 39, will still be a huge enemy, and still growls occasionally. And his mouth, as the mouth of a lion, claims to be Judah, speaks like he's Judah, but he's not Judah. And the dragon gave him his power. That's to say, Satan put this together. And his seat and great authority. Satan allows this. He puts it together. He plans it. And let me tell you something. Anytime today that you have one of these great movements that removes God from the vocabulary, Satan's behind it. It's the workings of the devil himself in the minds of man trying to remove the power of Almighty God. See, don't ever forget, as it is written in the great book of Luke, God gave us power over all of our enemies. You just have to have the brass horns to exercise it. You know, a lot of people are kind of wimpy, and that's why God doesn't choose too many wimps. He wants men and women that, um, that know how to practice and to utilize the authority that he gives us. 
because it's real and it's authority over all of our in even this mess all right when you know what it is and where it's coming um, Satan himself is your enemy therefore you have power over he's not going to mess with you unless he can lie to you unless he can deceive you verse 3 and I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world how much of it all the world wondered after the beast now you know, we have these people that get all carried away. Every time some world leader receives a deadly wound, it's, there it is. No, uh, what, what is this? this? This is not a creature. It's a system. How does a political system receive a deadly wound? A political system receives a deadly wound when it goes sour. When it when it when it's um, when when it fails to work when when some event happens or transpires that um, disallows it and God will see to it that this this um, uh, disannulment will transpire whereby the deadly wound will be received and what you're talking about here is the very instant that the false Christ appears on earth claiming to be Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, that will heal this deadly wound. Why? The whole world's going to whore after him because they're truly going to think it is Christ come to fly him away. And they're all set for it. They're ready for it. They have been programmed for it. Wonder where those lies came from that mislead people. They all come from Satan. He arranges it. Why? You were warned of that back in the 17th verse of the last chapter. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant. Going to try it from every corner. Okay. Now, next verse. Let's go with it. Verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war? With him, well, if it's a one-world system, there's no other war, uh, war, uh, nation left to uh, fight against it, except our heavenly Father and the remnant. They shall fight against it. You know, uh, we know, and you do not be surprised. This is not a war that you commonly think of as a war. As it is written in the great book of Daniel, he comes in prosperously and peacefully. He wins over many by peace. And this is why Christ himself, uh, through the word, would say, they will cry, peace, 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 but there shall be no peace. Why? Because Christ is the only prince of peace there is. But people deceived will follow anything. Uh, it doesn't take all that much in, um, in um, hero worship, so to speak, to get people today to 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 run after uh, some idle person or something of that nature okay verse 5 to continue verse 5 reads and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies that is to say against God what, what is the greatest blasphemy you can do against God to claim to be God yourself okay and power was given in him to continue forty and two months and uh, of course 40 and 2 months is what? That's moons. That's Satan's own. Anytime a prophecy is given in moons, it's lunar. And lunatics follow it. Okay? But uh, any prophecy that is given relating to God's children is given in days. So that you don't confuse that. This is a three and a half year period, short, just a few days. Why? Because uh, a one moon is not the equivalent of 30 solar days. So solar days gives about 10 extra days. And that's great. We can accomplish a lot in 10 days. Uh, and there we have it. Okay, verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name. 
and his tabernacle. What's that? His church. And them that dwell in heaven. So here he goes to Jerusalem itself, to the very um, Dome of the Rock. <clears throat> the holiest place of holy considered in the whole world. And on that Mount Zion, he goes, how does he blaspheme it? Claiming to be God. That's the greatest blasphemy there is. Have, well, have we been warned about this before? Of course we have. <clears throat> In the teachings of Paul, he made it so very clear that anyone should be able to understand it. We have people today that say, you don't have to worry because you're going to fly away. You're going to fly like a big butterfly. And of course, God in Ezekiel chapter 13 said, I'm against those that teach my children to fly to save their souls. <clears throat> you know, excuse me, but when God says something like that, you better give heed. You'd better pay attention. There is no clear writing so clear a child, a little child, can understand the consummation of the end of this age and exactly how it goes down in the scriptures we're reading from in that great 13th chapter of Revelation concerning that one world system and the dragon that comes and blasphemes God in the very temple of God which is to say Jerusalem you find it all of you should have this memorized by heart 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 we're going there 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 Verse 1. Now listen carefully and learn. Let, let Understand we have a one world political system, governmental system, and we have a world leader, Satan. Did Paul forewarn us? Listen carefully. Verse 1. Now we beseech you. This is, I want to warn you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's the subject? The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at the second advent. Like I said, a child can understand that. That's the subject. And by our gathering together unto him. But that's what every Christian looks forward to. He said, I want to warn you about Christ's return to this earth and our, that's God's elect, gathering back to Christ. See, that's the subject. That's the object as well. So, uh, like I said, when you let that sink in, a child can understand it. It's simple. In the simplicity in which Christ teaches, listen to Paul's words. Two, that you be not shaken in mind. Don't you let people shake you up or be troubled neither by spirit, that's to say some, some religious spirit, nor by word, that's to say somebody claiming to teach God's word, nor by letter as from us. Don't you let that first letter to the Thessalonians, especially chapter 4, mislead you about our gathering back to Christ. Meet him in the air. What it says is, you will meet him in the spiritual body. The word is aro in the Greek. And naturally, at that seventh trump, instantly we all change into spiritual bodies. That's what we meet him in. Is any letter from us as that the day of Christ is at hand? It's not going to happen until it happens exactly like I say it is. That's what Paul is saying. That's what Christ is saying. So, you need to listen to your father. Okay. The one world system comes into being. And this is the warning. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let it happen, beloved. That's how, that's how important and dangerous this is in the deception. For that day shall not come. I repeat, not come. It ain't going to happen. Except there come a falling away. That's an apostasy, the great apostasy. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Perdition is a palie in the Greek and it's one of Satan's names. It means to perish. There is only one entity 
one son of God that has already been sentenced to death, to perish, by name. Now, he's got some lieutenants that are sentenced to death, but they're not named. This one is named. Son of Perdition is one of Satan's names. If you go to a palier in, in the Greek, it is the prime of Satan's name, the destroyer, Apollyon. You read it back in the, 15th, the ninth chapter, where his name is given both in the Greek and the Hebrew, uh, in the English translation. So here you have him. I mean, how many guesses do you have there? What he has said is, there is no way, don't let some man deceive you. Christ is not returning to this earth. You're not flying away anywhere. You're not going anywhere until after the son of perdition stands in the holy place. What is he doing? He, we learn from in the 13th chapter, he returns to, to the tabernacle. That's Jerusalem. What does he do here? Now, now that we know who we're talking about, Christ does not return until Satan does what? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he, that's to say Satan as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Where is the temple of God? The, the, the mount and the, the uh, holy mount is so very important you have it in the news today it's sad but true and um, that's where Satan intends to sit and there will no one prevent him they will fall all over him because he claims to be God he performs miracles, as you're going to find when we continue in the 13th chapter of the great book of Revelation. Now, what have we learned here? It's so simple a child can understand. Don't let anybody deceive you about our gathering back to Christ. That it's not going to happen until after Satan stands in the holy place claiming to be God. Verse 5. And remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. When we were sitting around the campfire, we went through this over and over. Verse 6, And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now uh, letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, the he here... Uh, 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 being taken out is a transitive verb. You with companion Bibles, you're very fortunate. It will explain the transitive verb to you. Uh, what it sim Let me oversimplify it. A transitive verb is simply that the action must be transferred back to the who is the subject is before the understanding comes. So naturally the subject is Satan. And he who now holds Satan is who? You read it in Revelation chapter 12. Michael. Michael is the one that holds Satan in heaven, and Michael is the one that boots him out. So only he who let us will let until he be taken out, thrown out, cast out, and woe to you on earth. It transfers back to verse 4 and 5, Satan standing in the holy place claiming to be God. Okay? So, hey, the mystery already works. The little Kenites continue working over time. The, the uh, liberalism, which is communism, atheistic communism, continues to work. People removing God's name from vocabularies. Deceiving and lying to people. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, that two-edged sword you read of in chapter 116 of Revelation, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's when the second advent transpires. That's when Christ returns to this earth, and not until. But don't let anyone deceive you into worshiping Satan, whereby you would pray for the mountains to fall on you because of your shame. Verse 9, 
Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. In other words, Satan gives the Antichrist his power because it is Satan. Okay, the dragon, the old serpent, the devil. Remember all of his names there in chapter 12. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. They're going to hell. Because they refuse, receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They would not listen. No, we've got to take an easy out. We're, well, we don't have to learn Revelation. We're going to fly away anyway. We're going to be gone. That is a very strange thing when a man will let uh, another man tell him he doesn't have to understand the Word of God. That's ridiculous. A child knows better than that. The Word of God is paramount. And especially when the word Revelation means to reveal or to make known. Why would you let somebody tell you it was sealed? That's ridiculous. Verse 11, And for this cause God, this is God himself, shall send strong delusion that they should believe a lie. If you want to believe Satan's lies, God will let you. But I'm a Christian. No, you just claim to be. You're not following Christ. You're following the devil if you follow the one who comes first. If you're the first one taken in the field mentioned in Matthew 24. Because the first one that comes to the world, which is the field, is Satan. It's written here where, again, a child can understand. Verse 12 to complete. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I don't know. Do you have pleasure in unrighteousness? Untruth. Do you like to have your ears tickled with the traditions of men that make void the word of God? Then you want to be very careful, my friend. You know, let your little child read the Bible to you if you're confused. One that has can follow the subject and the object. You see, um, uh, and and um, follow God's word as it is written, and no one understand. All right, it's beautiful. It is saving. It is complete. Do you know what true wisdom is? True wisdom is to simplify that that might seem complicated whereby anyone can understand it. That's true wisdom. So let the Spirit of God give you the unction rather than the damnation of hearing and knowing the truth when you hear it so that you stand against Satan in that hour of temptation. Returning to chapter 13, the great book of Revelation, verse 7. And here again we come to that old dragon pretending to be God. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. But as it is written in the 11th chapter of Daniel, God's remnant is given a little help. A little help from the Holy Spirit is a bunch. Okay, All we need. It says they may waver, but they overcome in the name. Because why? we have the power over him. But most of the world, hey, it's going to be kind of a one-sided affair, my friend. Because people as, that wish to be deceived, God is going to allow it. As a matter of fact, he, he almost helps it along by sending the damnation to them. You want to listen to your Father's word. Analyze it. Let it flow as honey over the buds of your mind, whereby you are not deceived. Uh, uh, this war, who does he make war with? It's a spiritual war. This is why it's written in Mark 13 that a mother will betray a daughter to death or the father the son, deliver him up before death, which is to say the devil. Okay. He's trying to convert him. He's coming in peacefully and prosperously. It will deceive many people because he will say, worship me and believe me, and you have no debts. Look what I've done for the world. Going to be pretty convincing, friend. As Jesus would say in Mark 13, if I had not shortened the days, none, no flesh would be saved. 
I do not believe any, not one soul, will give over that is God's elect. Verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, there is an exception, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb's land from the foundation of the world. That means chosen before the catabo. You deeper students know and understand what I mean, the overthrow of Satan. Why? Because you stood against him there and you shall again. All will worship him except God's election. That's how good he is. You want, you want to prepare yourself mentally for that. So that you recognize it when it comes to pass. And so you don't feel lonely at that time because God will never leave you nor will he ever forsake you. And you and God make a majority. Verse 9, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Do you have ears to hear the truth when you hear it? Or do you have eyes to see in the world today as things transpire? Verse 10, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the and, and the faith of the saints. There is a great deal of destiny within that verse. It's an old Hebraism, which means you get what you got coming to you. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. You, and and um, you, you, you live by the sword of Satan, his lies, you're going to die by it. You live by the sword of the Lord. That double-edged sword that cuts both ways. The truth. Uh, and you will live by it. That's destiny. Have you known since you were a child there was a lot more to God's word than you had been taught? Then God will reveal it to you. He will give you those ears to hear that truth. And in that case, you're listening to the right sword to live by that sword. You have a destiny. Satan's going to be on your case, so what? You know? It isn't what's politically correct. It's what's morally correct. And what's morally correct is taught in the Word of God. That's the Word that is the Word of life. That's to say eternal life. It brings you eternal life. Hey, don't miss the next lecture concerning the mark of the beast. All right. Bless your heart. You listen a moment. Won't you please?